Hello, I'm Diane Catlin, English Language Acquisition Coordinator for Poudre School District in Fort Collins, Colorado. The documentary you are about to watch attempts to capture the heart and soul of a professional development program called Walk a Mile in Their Shoes. My vision for this three-week experience was for it to impact teachers and other school personnel, both academically and emotionally, in ways they could bring back to their individual job assignments. I wanted them to learn through simulating what many students experience, and then how they can make a difference in the educational success of English language learners at their schools. Held in Mexico City and Guanajuato, Mexico for the past four years, this program has four main elements, which I try to weave together into a rigorous, meaningful, and practical professional development opportunity. First, cultural immersion and language immersion through participating in the community through assigned and natural immersion exercises and also living with a Mexican family. Second, taking Spanish classes at a school three to four hours a day. Third, attending public schools attempting to participate as a student and also observing the school system where many of our English language learner students came from. Fourth, taking an ESL methods class, studying research and second language acquisition and best practices for working with second language learners. The participants you will see in this video are the most recent group to have gone on the Walk a Mile program. Over 65 participants have taken this challenge, bringing new understandings and a myriad of strategies back to their school sites. At the end of this video, you'll hear just briefly from past participants who share their impressions of the impact and the results of this program on their practice and their personal understanding of what it's like to truly walk a mile in their shoes. I chose to join this group on this excursion because I wanted to learn more about the Mexican culture and the education in another country. Plus, I also wanted to experience learning another language so I would be able to understand my students when I teach English better. I get into such a panic mode when I have to speak Spanish. And I can't communicate with people. I don't have the language that I need in order to get my thoughts across to people. And as someone who enjoys conversation, it's really hard to have to walk past people and not be able to communicate with them in some way. And it's hard to calm myself down when I'm in stores or restaurants and remember the Spanish, remember the words, know that I know it and just find them and use them in order to communicate. Yeah, really hard and I'm struggling with it quite a bit. <laughs> In the museum yesterday, it dawned on me that everything, thankfully, was in English and Spanish, written in English and Spanish. And I have, um, unfortunately, been inconvenienced or felt inconvenienced at school because I had to write signs in English and Spanish and notices home in English and Spanish. But had I not had that yesterday, I wouldn't have got a third of what I got out of the History Museum. Well, yesterday when we were at um the museum, we tried to read the Spanish side of the sign and struggled through it. And it made me think about how those content words, we could pull out some of those main words, but the, it took so much time and we were so tired and it, we'd get through one paragraph and we'd be exhausted. Every June we uh, welcome between 10 and 15 different teachers uh, from Fort Collins and um, we immerse them into uh, 
not only the Spanish language, but the, into the Mexican culture. And there are various critical elements for that immersion, um, one of them being to learn, obviously, the Spanish language so that they have a higher ability to communicate. However, even more important is to live with the Mexican family and thereby to accept a completely different circumstance for living and a completely different environment. Um, other elements also play a critical role into that. Um, teachers go to public schools, in the public schools, they see how their Mexican counterparts uh, work and act, and they experience how Mexican kids live, go to school, and learn uh, in a completely different environment, but also in a very similar way uh, than uh, Mexican kids do learn in the United States. Um, moreover, we try to immerse um, the people who are coming to our school into Mexican culture by excursions, by uh, activities in the evening, uh, when they have um, the opportunity to listen to Mexican music, uh, to go out in the streets and to experience Mexican life. Soy directora general y fundadora de la Escuela Mexicana. Hace aproximadamente 10 años empezamos con la escuela. So it's our first day here at uh, Escuela Mexicana. It was very exciting for everyone to get here. And we started out by having an assessment. We all came at 8 o'clock and we took a written assessment that helped them decide what classes to place us in. And after taking the assessment, we had a short break and came back and received our class schedule. When we came in this morning to take the pretest to determine what level um, we would best learn Spanish at, I was uh, a little nervous. Many new, I had a lot of it with review, but a lot of new things, and the teachers are wonderful. I was so impressed with, I have three different teachers, and I was so impressed with the caliber and the, and the enthusiasm of the teachers here. I, I just can't say enough about the teachers. After taking three classes today, I felt great. I felt like I was going to be able to learn. The teachers were focused on our level. They used sheltered Spanish. Thinking about how a newcomer or even a uh, English language learner would feel coming into a new school, um, probably very nervous and intimidated, um, maybe being judged not only on their intelligence, but how they understood English. And I felt like I was being judged on my Spanish ability, which isn't very high, but hopefully not my intelligence. When you open your envelopes, you'll find um, a bunch of puzzle pieces that are different colors, and to aid you in your attempt to put together all the stages of language acquisition, um, they're divided into categories, and there's not in any particular order, whatever order you want. There's time, there's definitions of the stage, there's the name of the stage, and there's the receptive vocabulary. Uh, some other activities we've done, we did some language acquisition puzzles where the group had to cooperative, cooperatively work to match um, evidence of being at certain language stages with that language stage. So that was a, a fun way to have people get a bit, little better handle on language acquisition. The other thing that has occurred in our classes is a lot of really rich dialogue. As we present a topic and the groups and the participants can talk with each other about what they're experiencing and then apply it to their specific job. The dialogue has been really, really rich and really meaningful. We talk about in English language acquisition how real learning, not just teaching, real learning is purposeful and meaningful and authentic. And in this environment, the learning has, is really authentic. So we're finding as teachers that the conversations are truly authentic too. And I believe that they will dial them up when they get back home because it's been an emotional, intense experience. It's 
the middle of the first week of actual classes, and I'm finding that the most of the group is experiencing a little more fatigue than typical at home, but they're adjusting. There really is a lot of energy around beginning that process of language acquisition. They're enjoying their Spanish classes. They're the connections are happening so fast. I'm hearing teachers say, oh, I've had a student at this stage. Oh, I know what they feel. I, now I know something else I will change to make this process, especially for newcomers, easier. But our first week is going really well. One of the things we did in tonight's class was to talk to the st staff about what have they done, the list of immersion activities that we have to follow. Um, the purpose of it is to make people um, really get out of their comfort zone and to experience what families experience when they move to our community. They have to find a place to rent, they have to find a school for their children to attend, they have to use utilities, they have to go to the bank so they can you know, deposit paychecks, get money. So those are part of our immersion activities here in Guadalajara, and it's hard to do. And we've had a number of people already attempt to do those activities with the limited amount of Spanish they've learned in the last week, and it's really difficult. So from there, we, pro we went right into processing how it felt to be there. What was that immersion experience like? How frustrating is it when you don't have the vocabulary necessary to get your point across to somebody? And how you have to talk yourself through it, calm yourself down, know that you're doing the right thing, you just don't have the vocabulary you need to get your thoughts across, so you have to move to a different set of vocabulary, the one that you do have. So it's always interesting to hear about people's coping skills, what kind of resiliency uh, they have in a situation where they're so out of their comfort zone and to remain there and work through the entire experience. There's so many benefits to living, to a, to living with a family um, when you're in an immersion type ex, um, experience such as this. I've, um, the family that we live with, their names are Petra and Ugo, are the mother and father of the family and um, they've really developed a lot of a tremendous skill around supporting our language development. And um, so they, we have many opportunities to talk with them um, at different times during the day and around different activities. They also use sheltering techniques that we're learning about in our ELL class. They use sheltering techniques such as demonstration or pointing to, or they slow it down they explain it in another way and so it's been a really great opportunity for us to learn more Spanish and to practice our Spanish. It's a very safe environment to practice in um, and they offer us many opportunities so that's been really exciting. In my time here in Guanajuato, I've been in a second grade classroom uh, here at the school Juan Dios Dada, and I have realized that I don't even have second grade Spanish. It's really hard for me to be able to um, speak to the children. A bear. Everything's starting to come together now. Um, we can see the, the reasons that we've been reading these articles and writing our journal and, and doing all the different kinds of things that, that we've been doing together because we've had all these experiences where we, we know how it feels when we don't speak the language that most of the people around us speak. And it helps us relate better to our students when we do that. Um, we're reading articles about um, myths that that are prevalent with among teachers um, about the best way to teach uh, English language learners and 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 learning new techniques that that would be better for for them and not just for the English language learners but truly for for all students that really need. Uh, a little extra help because they learn in a different way than than our schools teach. The teachers and the principal have agreed to let the participants of the Walk a Mile program sit in the class as if they were a new student to that class. So they they are not teaching English. They are not 
helping or volunteering, they are actually assuming the role of a student and trying to feel what it would be like to be a second language learner and how much can they participate, what coping skills do they lean on, what strategies um, might they be able to help their students back in the United States learn, uh, how might they relate to the affective part of when they feel left out, when other students try to help them. Sometimes that feels great, sometimes that feels like being smothered. It, it has been really interesting. But then there was this word arista, and I, you know, I was guessing, I thought, well, maybe she means angles or points. And um, there was no way for me to know from the class. And there was another one that was polyedro, which is, was polyhedron, but I didn't have to really understand that. It was like there was this one word that I really didn't get. It, sort of, it didn't really take away from what was going on because things were going slowly enough, but it was a word, unless I was gonna pull out my dictionary, I wouldn't have known what it was. And um, I did come back and look it up, and it's, it means edge. So this, the point I think you asked me to make is that this is cognitive academic language, and it's vocabulary I never would have learned on the street. I had to look it up, I had to be specifically taught it. And other kids won't be able to pick up a lot of things that we do in a classroom um, because it's this kind of context. Ustedes van a ver que siempre en la política mexicana va a haber dos palabras que se repiten siempre. Walter uh, taught a class tonight entirely in Spanish to those of us who have very basic Spanish, those of us who have a little bit more Spanish, those who have a lot more Spanish, and he did it in a way to help all of us learn the government of Mexico. I'm very surprised at how much I learned in that whole class, and I really like that context because then for those um, second language learners coming in, they are um, also can learn a lot in content without, you know, without having to know a lot of English. In the class tonight that we really emphasized was drawing a connection between what they're experiencing as students of Spanish here, what they're learning in our class about language acquisition, theoretically and in, in, in terms of research, and then drawing an implication to their classroom or their specific job in PSD. How can they apply this principle that we're sharing and highlighting and they're experiencing, how can they apply that to their job? Another part to this experience for me has been thinking a lot about how valuable it is for me here in this to learn about what our students might be going through as they come into the um, as they come into our new culture without speaking the language and try to enter school and so all those things have been really good for me from a standing of developing empathy for them and understanding what goes on for their families and I know this is a really shortened experience but it it has helped me tremendously and what I wonder is how can we support other teachers who maybe don't have access to this kind of environment or this opportunity, how can we support them in developing that empathy and understanding that, that we're able to develop by immersion? The teachers uh, in the class are reaching a, a higher level of understanding because they're experiencing total immersion in Spanish and the frustration and difficulties of sitting in a classroom and not understanding what's going on. And because of our um, second language class, they're beginning to understand what sheltering techniques are, what scaffolding looks like, and how that can impact student achievement because you're helping all students access the curriculum and the content. And that's what sometimes we forget to do because we don't understand that everybody doesn't get it. So when you're sitting in a classroom and you're having that difficulty, you get that piece really quickly. The biggest benefit the most that I have gained from this experience is to be a student again and to work in a classroom where the content is very difficult for me and being in the role of a student um, I believe it will help me be a more sympathetic teacher um, I've gained a lot of strategies that will help me um, with my with all students as well as ELA students
And I think that I will be a more patient um, teacher. I will be more understanding. I'll try to give the kids multiple opportunities to um, respond and understand. And I think the other thing that um, I really want to try to do is connect kids with each other so that they have kind of a, a support system like we've all been for each other. And when we haven't understood something, we turned to the other person in our class and said, do you get that? <laughs> so I think that um, just a real awareness of, of kids and um, what they feel and how, what, how they can respond when they're frustrated. Yo tengo mucha experiencia con gente que quiere venir a aprender mi idioma y en algunas ocasiones mi cultura. Vienen, ahorran por mucho tiempo su dinero, pero el, el, la meta es aprendo español y posible puedo obtener un mejor trabajo. Son muchas veces metas económicas. El programa de Fort Collins en especial me interesa a mí y a todo mi equipo porque no es venir e invertir un dinero para obtener más dinero, es venir y ver, sensibilizarse, conocer la gente, cuál es el beneficio, regresar a sus trabajos y poder tener mejor calidad de educación, mejor entendimiento para mi gente. Esto realmente nos llena de satisfacción y de orgullo. En la escuela estamos dispuestos a aportar todo lo necesario para poder crecer este programa, hacer que crezca y poder traer más gente que entienda las necesidades culturales, idiomáticas, climatológicas, incluso alimentaria. Todo esto vamos a tratar de apoyarlos, vamos a tratar de darles a conocer, a mejorar cada año que ustedes vengan y más que nada les damos las gracias por su intención de conocer mi cultura. What has been very striking to me um, is the changes that I have been able to observe in those teachers because in the beginning uh, I have the chance to welcome everybody and to get a feeling of um, their anxieties and expectations and um, in the end after the three weeks I also have the uh, opportunity to talk uh, again to them and to see how wonderful uh, the experience has been for most of those teachers uh, by really seeing and experiencing life in Mexico and growing for themselves as people and as teachers and as um, parts of the community. As a principal, I had four teachers that participated in Walk a Mile, and I was so impressed with their level of growth and understanding of the needs of uh, immigrant students into our school after they had participated. They changed how they act in the classroom and the support they were able to give kids because they understood the level of frustration and challenges that a new kid to the country feels when they first come. The ESL class and the experiences I had while I was down there gave me the tools to recognize that same kind of experience from a student here in the United States who maybe doesn't have the academic knowledge to talk about what's happening in algebra class or they don't have the knowledge to or the vocabulary to talk about their behavior. Um, and as someone who does a lot of behavioral interventions with students, I've learned to recognize when that language part problem and the vocabulary problem is there and I have the tools to deal with it. I did not speak any Spanish when I went, and I just, I just felt it was just an absolutely fantastic experience that I brought back to the school, and I think my, I do my job much better for it. I also uh, use a lot more visuals, and I know how important it is to use more visuals in my teaching. Over the last four years, six staff members have participated in the Walk a Mile program, and it has brought great energy to our building understanding of the needs of our English language learners and, and has extended beyond myself. I went four summers ago and the one thing that has stuck with me since then has been the, is the memory of sitting in that class not having an understanding at all what the teacher was talking about, all the people in class, and on a regular basis if not every single year I get monolingual students in my classroom and to see that same expression on their face and to know that at the end of the lesson to go over and connect with them 
try my best to make them realize that I understand what they're going through and we're going to get them through this. In my role as a guidance counselor in a high school, one of the things that's really, I think, I've brought back that has maybe changed a little bit about what I do in my job is that it's given me just, even though I think I had a caring awareness, I think what it has done is heightened what the experience is like for a family that would walk into our office to register their child for school or to get help with the schedule or that might have concerns about their child's education. I have a whole different level of understanding of what that actually feels like. I understand the emotional impact of trying to communicate in a second language in a much more visceral way than I did before. I'm much more empathetic. I am much more effective in my teaching now as a result of this class because I try to see where is this kid coming from and how do they see the situation from their cultural and their socioeconomic and whatever background they bring into the classroom compared to the way that I used to just treat them all as all one size fits all.